now hear our call to worship. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Come, let us find light and rejoice. Let us worship. we come to you this day in wonder. As the year opens before us, we wonder what it holds for us. We wonder where you will lead us, how you will call us to follow in the days ahead. Your purposes are beyond our comprehension, O God, but your presence is always with us. So we offer you our trust for the days ahead as we seek to follow in the footsteps of Christ, our newborn King. God of light and life, you have come to us in Christ Jesus to open a path to new life. Yet, once the new year has begun, we long for things to get back to normal, especially this year. We confess that our resolutions for change often don't last long. Old habits draw us back into familiar ways. It is so hard for us to make a new beginning, O oh God, even with the best of intentions. Forgive us and renew our determination to know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. And now hear us in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Arise, shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. 
The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Let us pray. 
O oh God, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Well, recently we've been busy giving, buying, receiving gifts for family and friends, for those who have no family or friends, and for people halfway around the world. And some we know and some we don't. This started with the greatest gift of all. God's gift of love to us, to everyone, embodied in that wee baby Jesus, who becomes the risen Christ. The gifts we name and celebrate in this time of worship come out of our life experience. Our using of them in the service of others is our gift to God, offered on this Epiphany Sunday in gratitude and love and in Jesus' name. Remember the last verse of the hymn in the bleak midwinter? What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. What can I give him? Give him my heart. Well, what can we give him? We bring the gift of hospitality. A cup of cold water, a plate of cookies, a tuna fish casserole, a handshake, a smile of welcome, a bed for the night, a ride to share, a home, a church, a neighborhood, open to all God's children. We could bring the gift of hospitality. Think of someone you know that has the gift of hospitality. What can you learn from them? Why does this gift seem important? I remember one of my travels to countries where our church is involved in mission. In Guatemala, we visited a poor Mayan community on a hillside, and they served us soup with broth and meat. Doesn't seem much to us, but when you realize that meat is a luxury for them, they gave of their all. We were their guests. Hospitality is extremely important to them. They taught us hospitality. What can we give him? We can bring the gift of friendship. We have friends who love us no matter what. Friends who call on the phone or stop by for coffee. We can go shopping Friends who remember birthdays and anniversaries, both happy and sad. Friends who hug us when we hurt and listen when we're mad and are always there when we need them. We bring the gift of friendship. Friendship. You, remember, you may remember that three years ago, I was dealing with a diagnosis of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was overwhelmed with the cards and the calls and the emails and the gifts. A blanket arrived in the mail from a dear cousin and lifelong friend. It brought tears to my eyes. I remarked to someone how surprised I was with the outpouring of support from near and far, from family and friends and people I barely knew. He responded, you have paid it forward many times. Now it's coming back to you. Wow. Our next gift is sharing. Sharing means giving up away part of yourself. Sharing means walking in your neighbor's shoes, or if need be, giving the shoes to him or her, your own shoes. Sharing isn't easy. It takes generosity of spirit and largeness of heart when often you don't feel that way. Sharing is tough, but it produces enormous profit for the soul. We bring the gift of sharing. What can we give him? We bring the gift of laughter, of smiles and chuckles and giggles, of friends sharing jokes, good ones and not so good ones. The laughter that takes away tension and heals pain that says, life isn't life crazy. Gentle laughter that tickles, 
party, side-splitting laughter that fills the whole room, laughter that does good like medicine. We bring the gift of laughter. Have you noticed that in the depth of seriousness, a little laughter lifts life? It's hard to go through tough times, stressful times, serious times without laughter. Seeing the light side of things gets us through many challenges. I recently did a funeral for a man whose name was Robinson. So when I introduced him, I said his name was Robinson, not Robertson. And then I said, my name is Robertson, not Robinson. And only those who know that people mix up those names often saw the laughter. Laughter said at the prof proper moment opens up life. We bring the gift of laughter. We bring the gift of music. Music to sing, music to dance to, fast music, slow music. Jazz and rock, Bach and Beethoven. Music for great choirs and for solo voices. Christmas carols and Easter anthems. Hymns of praise and songs of joy from organ, flute and drum. A whistle, a hum, a song of the heart. We bring the gift of music. I can't imagine life without music, but I understand that not everyone feels this way. But music is important for many people. Music provides a balance in life. Have you noticed that there's singing in every culture? Dance and music are gifts given to every group of people. What would Christmas be like without carols, traditional and new? What would a birthday be like without singing happy birthday? I used to say when my children were little, as long as we sang happy birthday, had a cake and had balloons, it was their birthday. What would worship be like without music of praise and prayer? We bring the gift of music. What can we give him? We bring the gift of color, the colors of Christmas, red, green, white, silver, and gold, the colors of the church windows that tells the story of God's love, the colors of fall leaves and spring flowers, the colors of God's rainbow of people. We bring the gift of color. When I take down my Christmas decorations, my house feels empty. That color and those lights are gone. So I keep a reminder or two of the season. My basket of Christmas cards, which I read several times before I put them away, and a poinsettia plant. The lights, the color of Christmas warms our hearts through these shortest of days. The colors of all the seasons of the year, winter, spring, summer, and fall, and the church year, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, and Pentecost are to be celebrated as gifts. We bring the gift of color. We also bring the gift of life experience, of years of learning the hard way, of understanding a little more each time, of a sense of proportion. Some things are important, some things can wait and still the universe unfolds, appreciating what you have when you have it, and saying so to people in your life who matter, of living each day as it comes, a gift from God to be enjoyed to the fullest. We bring the gift of experience. When we follow the work of someone great, we can feel inadequate. We can't do us. We can't do it they way, their way. You know the line. But we forget that we bring a different set of experiences, of knowledge and abilities. Each of us are equally able, but differently able. We each bring that special gift to our task. Our ways may look different. Our goal may seem different but our life experience teaches us to work in ways that we are able. We bring the gift of life experience. 
We also bring the gift of work, the work of hands which build and clean, which heal and touch, which plant and harvest, the work of minds which invent and discover, which puts ideas together, which teach and reflect, the work of lives that are dedicated to the care of the earth and the service of others. We bring the gift of work. Isn't it amazing how different we can be? Even those of us who come out of a similar mold. We are a powerful force when we add up all our gifts and abilities. Some of us work better with our hands, some with our minds. Some of us have experience in one area and some in another. Have you noticed that when it comes time to prepare the annual report, it's amazing to see in one document how much has been done by so many people in one year. We bring the gift of work. And the last one, we bring the gift of faith. Sometimes big enough to move mountains, sometimes so small it's hard to believe it's there. Faith that gets you through tough times and lets you sleep easy because you know that you're in good hands, God's hands. It's something to sing about, shout about, that deep, deep knowledge of God and God's mighty acts, handed on from one generation to the next. We bring the gift of faith. Over the years, I have discovered how little I know about another person's faith. People who appear, appear to have very little faith sometimes meet crises with deep faith. And people who appear to be very faithful fall apart when a major challenge hits their lives. Where do each of us fall on this continuum? It is not an answer that I need to know. The answer is between you and God. We bring the gift of faith. The gift of the Christ child, like the wise men, like the wise men, we have brought our gifts to Jesus. Jesus is God's gift to us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, so that everyone that believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. This is the message of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. 
God of all seasons, you have enriched our faith through reminding us of all that we have and can bring to the Christ child. Sometimes we feel poor in faith, poor in ability, and forget how much we have to offer. Thank you for teaching us about the richness of life and what we can bring to you. Oh God, it is easy to look at material things and think people are poor. But you remind us that richness comes in things unseen. Thank you for your presence and for this time to reflect on our faith. Thank you for all the unseen gifts we have received and experienced in the recent days. And thank you for the opportunities we have had to share our unseen gifts with others. We pray that these may continue and increase in our days ahead. May we always share them with friends, family, neighbors, and those whom we have not met before. We also pray this morning for those who feel bereft of gifts, who feel lonely, sad, and mad. May they find your arms reaching out to them. May they know how to receive them. We pray for those who are affected by this COVID-19 restrictions. May they find hope in you and comfort from our phone calls and distance visits. We pray for this church, this community, and all who follow you. May they be enriched on this day of worship, whether here in body or in spirit. This morning we pray in silence for peoples whose burdens rest on our hearts. Gracious God, we give ourselves to you, ready to be your hands, your feet, your voice, and your arms in all that you will ask us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received, do. And the God of peace be with you, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 